Hey, we're back. Episode five. Five more episodes until episode ten. <laughs> That's about as far as my math skills goes. But welcome on in to Crosshair Conversations with Chrissy. I'm Chrissy. Again, if you don't know what this podcast is about, who I am, episode one, we'll tell you all of that, as well as my socials, Chrissy HQ on everything. So definitely check that out. I definitely want to thank you guys for listening and watching if you're watching on YouTube. Um, you guys keep me motivated. You keep me going. Without y'all, all these amazing things that are coming up would not be happening. Let me tell you, I will have an episode all about my plans for this summer, but currently I'll just give you the quick rundown. There's lots of cons and expos that I will be attending, but September, September is the biggest one. Well, a most exciting one, I think, right now. Liverpool, England. I will be there. I will be in Liverpool, England at the end of September for Format. It is a gaming social event uh, that your girl was invited to go as a content creator. So expect a whole lot of content from that because uh, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm Chrissy HQ is going international, you guys. Like I... <sighs> okay, but as the dates get closer and summer goes by and different events pop up, definitely follow Chrissy HQ on all socials. You will find all the information there. Now, we're dressed a little comfy today. We're having a really chill day, but we've got some exciting things to talk about. So I'm just going to kind of rapid fire some things at you. I do have some episodes coming up that are going to be more pinpointed on topics, but I'm just excited for the future. And I think I've said this every single episode, but let's let's get started. Let's Let's rapid fire. Let's get it. First thing first, 2017 is when the Nintendo Switch was released, and it became the third top-selling console, uh, like, immediately. I have one. I rarely use it, but I need to get better at that. But I do think it's pretty cool, and, I mean, I just, I love, I love all my consoles, honestly, but the Switch is really cool. There is a fitness game that I need to get better at doing, because it actually makes you work up a little bit of a sweat, but... Third highest top selling console, and that was 2017. It was just recently announced, though, that they're planning another console. Now, we don't really have any idea of what this is going to be like. They've done well at keeping this very locked down, secure, no leaks, as, like at least that I could find. But I, I'm excited. I'm ready. They're saying next year, so that's going to be 2025. Something new is going to drop. I will say my expectations for this are high. I do not know if they can just come out with another Switch type console. It's got to have something more. It's going to have to be able to be something that can compete. And who knows, maybe it's going to be something VR, you know, wrapped around. But I'm, I'm excited for that, but my expectations are high. Next up, we have a company, right, with some new crazy tech coming, Ring. Now, you all know the Ring doorbells. We've seen the funny videos or the, you know, the videos of people trying to break in or kids at Ring doorbells, things like that. Everyone has one. The front door doorbell company camera thing. But they themselves, they've already made a name for themselves in like home security, like in that department, they kind of got that locked down. And coming soon, they're releasing a security drone. Yes, a security drone that will hover around your house, like inside, through the air, just going room to room. I think that is so sick. I, I will be getting it. I don't care what the price point is. I will sell my soul. To, I'm getting it. Um, I love the smart home technology. I just, I do. And the more and more it advances and the more we get, it's just so amazing. And I'm I'm excited for that. And that should be coming in 2024. Um, hope probably at the end, because we're not hearing much about it. They did talk a little bit at CES about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Now, after that, we know that there are exciting things coming. We'll talk about more exciting things as well, but there are also some not great things. I know you've seen the layoffs, Microsoft, Riot Client, Twitch, so many other tech companies in the industry. It makes me wonder, is the career, like headed into a career that's tech-based, is that a safe idea? I currently, I'm currently going back to school and I might actually be changing my major. Nobody nobody really knows this, but um, I was going for game programming and I'm starting to think, I don't wanna say it's a little bit over my head, but I don't think I have a passion for game programming. Game design, maybe something in the marketing, I want to stay kind of in the same realm of that, 
but I don't think that the initial programming is for me. But I am currently going back to school for it because I found out that it is one of my interests. And I guess it just worries me seeing all these layoffs. They happen every year, but it's kind of it's kind of increased in a rapid rate and it's kind of alarming to see this. Is it smart? Is it worth it to invest in an education in this industry where, you know, the regular nine to five person's job in this industry is at risk at the start of every quarter? That's at least what it seems like. And we have to remember that these layoffs, they're presented to us as numbers and stats, but they are also real people. If you go to TikTok right now and look up tech layoffs, there's thousands, thousands of people that have made TikToks about how this is their second or third layoff in the tech industry, and they're not sure if they can keep doing this. And honestly, they've worked for this company, they've received the income, maybe benefits, and then to have all of that taken away. And I don't know, it's probably different for each company, but I'm sure that you get some type of package at the end, but that's still such an uneasy feeling. We've all started a new job, whether in the same industry or not, different company or not, it's never easy. It's never fun. There are fun moments, but it's still, you You want to have that security of having your job, knowing what it is and knowing that that's your job. Like, I don't know. I think the tech industry right now and the past year is just, it's making it look like a high risk, high reward type of industry. And for the high reward, some of us want to take that high risk, but I can see how it's looking less and less appealing every day. Now, another interesting thing back on the excitement of new products and new things coming. In the tech news this morning, I found out about WaterCube. WaterCube is a new device that was debuted at CES, which I still regret not being able to get to, but next year you best believe I will be there. But okay, new device. It's a machine that can create water out of air. Yep. It's being marketed where it can pull 110 gallons of water out of the air a day. And for the price point, we're looking at $20,000. Now, according to the company Genesis, Genesis says that the government has had access to this for a while, which I don't know. I feel like it's kind of scary. They were hiding it from us, but I, I, you know, I digress. But it's just a high-tech dehu- uh, dehumidifier. I don't know why I stumbled over that word, but it's just a high tech dehumidifier in my opinion, but it does also have the purification like tech included, which is really cool. I run a dehumidifier every summer because we get pretty humid summers and then a humidifier in the winter because the air is so dry, but my dehumidifier definitely fills up with disgusting water sometimes. It does not have the purification system. But it also isn't collecting 110 gallons a day. That would be crazy. So it's going to be interesting to see, is the government going to allow us to use this? Like, technically, that's free water after that $20,000, which I know a lot of parts in the world, shoot, America and more, could use that. There, that could, there could be a lot of use for a machine like this. But again, are they going to allow us to use this? I don't, I don't know. But with that, there are other new products that are hitting the market all 2024. 2024 is going to be huge for tech. For example, there's a new iPad coming. Now, I don't really know what the iPod tech is. iPad. iPad, not iPod. I'm sorry. I'm a millennial. But uh, I don't know what the new iPads are like nowadays. I don't use an iPad. Not an Apple person. If you missed the last episode, you'd know. But... um this new iPad hopefully should have new features. They haven't really released much about it. It does say it's going to have an OLED screen, which is going to be cool. But Apple is concerned that the production time is going to take too long with such a high demand. And you guys know I call them I sheep. A lot of people call them I sheep, and I hope you don't get offended by it. But I sheep are people that follow Apple above and beyond, no matter what they do. And you know that the iSheep are gonna be in line at that Apple store as soon as the new iPad drops. So they're worried they're not gonna be able to keep up because of the high demand that they're predicting. Now on the other end of the scale, the Apple Vision Pro is failing. They're failing to sell out their pre-order. And to be honest, I'm like I said, I'm not a huge Apple consumer, but the design of the Vision I think is I think it's pretty sick. I love the futuristic type look. It looks really, really cool. 
but it's being reported that the headset is too heavy when being worn and is causing major discomfort. It's being reported that the hand tracking on the Vision Pro is not great. Like if you're typing, it's more of a finger poke situation because it cannot hand track for you to seamlessly type on like the virtual keyboard. That's kind of annoying. Some more things that are being said is that like Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, other apps like that that are pretty well known on every device, they have not created software apps that work with the Apple Vision Pro. So something that we've been looking for is like wearing these headsets, these VR headsets and watching movies, videos, reels, things like that. And if they don't have that ability, it's kind of a downside, you know? Also, with that being a downside, there's only a two hour battery time. Two hours might seem great to some people, but again, we're looking for Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, things like that. If you're watching a movie, like let's say off of one of their web browsers, since they don't have Netflix or YouTube, most movies are longer than two hours. So you're not really, you can't even watch a full movie on this. And the biggest downfall that's being reported now is the price point. Starting at 3,500 to 3,900, it's a very steep price for a device with so many negatives, especially with the MetaQuest on top right now at $500, major difference. It has the app capabilities that users are looking for. It's lighter, battery is better. I need Apple to step it up and switch some things up quickly. Otherwise, their Vision Pro isn't gonna go very far, but hopes for the iPad, the new iPad coming out. Now for things that are working and always getting better and a company that in my opinion just cannot fail, let's talk about Samsung. The Samsung 24 series is taking a huge leap into the future and I'm ready. I want this new phone, the S24 uh, Ultra, so bad. I want it so bad. But with the new hardware they're bringing, they're also bringing new software, which includes Galaxy AI. And I've talked about it before. I love AI. I love everything AI. I know it's scary. I totally get that. But I also can see how it can be so helpful to all of us in the future, in business aspects, in everyday life. I just, I'm so excited. So with this big new step into Galaxy AI, and as a fan of both AI and Samsung, I will be getting this. But Galaxy AI, what some of the things it can do. When you're talking on the phone, it has real-time, real-call translation. Meaning if you're speaking to somebody who might be speaking a different language than you, in real-time, on the phone, it can translate. That's a game-changer. No more language barriers when doing business calls or just talking to someone from another country or that speaks a different language. I think it's gonna break the, like I said, language barrier and just make it easier and more comfortable to create relationships. And I love that. I love talking to people. Clearly I love talking because I have a podcast where I just sit here and talk to myself and then you guys. But I think it's just gonna open up a whole new world of different, I don't know, you meet so many more people now. That's so exciting. I'm ready. It's also gonna include Magic Editor. Magic Editor is something I'm totally gonna use. Obviously I'm a content creator. I use my DSLR for a lot of things, but currently my Samsung, I have an older Samsung um, and for the first time in a long time, I've cracked the screen and I don't really use my phone for content. I really, really like the feel of my DSLR, but if I had better, I guess, software or a, a more newer phone, I'm one of the more newer versions, I probably would use it a lot more. And with Magic Editor, it's gonna be a new editor for seamless, beautiful photos, AI created. So that's gonna be nice. You're not, I'm not saying you're not gonna need to know some knowledge about editing, but it's just gonna make it easier for all of us to look flawless. And who doesn't wanna look flawless? So coming soon, once I get this phone, stay tuned for some perfect content. <laughs> now the new Samsung AI, is going to also integrate with the Samsung keyboard with some new features such as conversation, conversational tone indicators. I, now I have no idea how this is gonna work, but you know when you've been texting someone and they put LOL in a spot and you're not sure what kind of LOL that is, there's gonna be indicators to tell you what the tone most likely is. I think that's gonna be super helpful 
as well as new emoji integration and in normal Samsung fashion, they're gonna have the productivity features that we have loved for years and years. They're unmatched, don't at me, I don't wanna hear it. We all know Samsung is a step ahead when it comes to productivity and professionalism. And now they're gonna have new note-taking features for those of us in school or business meetings, or if you just wanna take notes throughout the day, there's gonna be a lot of new things to help out with that. So Samsung, major W from your girl, I'm excited. And again, go watch the last episode if you just want to know more about my little Apple and Samsung thing. I love Samsung. Always will. Yeah, always will. So last thing for us to talk about today, I know I feel like I might have rushed through this a little bit, but I just get so excited. But available on Steam, there is a new game. There's a new game after three years in the making, and it is called War Hospital. Now, War Hospital you play as a British war doctor assigned to a field hospital, and the setting is like the First World War, right? Back in time. You're saving and rescuing thousands of soldiers, as well as controlling your staff so that you're running an efficient, effective hospital during war. Now, I'm not a huge fan of, like, healthcare games. I'm not a huge fan of war, I guess, in general either, if it's, like, the injury side of it. I just get the heebie-jeebies. I'll never be a nurse. I can't do it. But I am curious to see after three years what these graphics will look like and how the reviews will do. So best believe I'm going to be looking on Twitch for somebody that's streaming this. But it is on Steam and it just, um, just was released in the past week or so. If you find this game interesting, definitely drop in the comments if you're going to check it out. I would love to know how many people are into that. And looking forward to that, there are so many other games coming this year as well. Kind of a fun statistic. I found Steam in 2023 released 14,535 new games. That's a 2,000 release difference from 2022. And I guess we can expect greatness coming for the next the next year. 2024 is about to blow those numbers out the water because in the first four days of 2024, 80 new games were released already on Steam in the first four days. If they keep up with this trend, we will easily, easily be at 29,000 games by the end of the year. Now, we all know some of these are hit and some of these are missed, but if there are some that you've seen or you're excited about, also drop those in the comments below. I main Valorant and Call of Duty, a little bit of Overwatch, maybe Apex, sometimes Fortnite, but I'm always looking for something new. And I might even try it only once or twice, but If I don't know about it, I'm not going to be able to try it. So if you find anything new and exciting, drop those in the comments down below as well. Again, you guys, this is going to be an exciting, exciting year. Thank you so much for joining with a little rapid fire tech news. I'm Chrissy HQ. I'll be back for the next episode and every episode after that. And hopefully you will too. And yeah, thanks.